what better way to start off 2024 than to show you a haul of mostly dollar books that I picked up from a few different locations. Check it out. Hey everyone, and welcome to my channel. My name's Chris, and this is North Garden Comics. As I sit here filming this, it's still New Year's Eve 2023, but by the time you watch this, it'll fully be 2024. So before we get into anything, I want to stop and wish you all a very happy new year. I hope you've enjoyed a great festive and safe holiday season with your friends and family. And for most of us now, uh, the break is over to whatever extent you got a break and now it's back to work. But that doesn't mean we can't squeeze in some time for some comic book hauls. And that's exactly what I've got for you today. This is a stack of mostly dollar books, and a few of them are 50 cents. And a couple may have actually been $2. And I'll see if I can remember which ones off the top of my head and point those out when we get to them. But mostly dollar books. And I got these from a few different sources. I combined these together because I've got a, a few hauls here to share with all of you that... You know, I got a few books here, a few books there, not enough from any one location maybe to make its own video. So I, I consolidated a few things together here and I'll tell you where I got each of these books as well. And for any place that's got links to stores or shows or things like that, I'll put links to that good stuff down in the description in case you want to check any of those things out on your own time. But for now, let's go ahead and get to this first haul of 2024. All right, the first pretty sizable stack of books that I'm going to show you all came from one or another location of a chain here that we have in the Twin Cities. The stores are called Dreamers Vault and I would guess they're probably better known for hosting role-playing games and card competitions, things like Magic the Gathering, uh, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, things like that. But they do also have a comic book section. The one limitation I'll say is that they focus on new comic books. And so their back issues are comprised of mostly, you know, relatively recent titles that have run from a variety of publishers. They don't have a deep old back issue section, but that's okay, especially if you're into reading new comics like I am, as well as getting those back issues. But one great thing about Dreamer's Vault is that they will pretty characteristically, once their new issues are no longer new and they come off of the rack for the new books, they'll move them into their back issue section, but at that point they become half price. So on any given day when you go in, you already are getting a great deal because the books are all half off cover price for the back issues. Now a second thing that makes them so great is that they will periodically run great sales on those back issues. And the books I'm gonna show you today come from one of two different sales. There was one sale that happened where they were doing dollar back issues. And so I popped around to a, a couple of the different locations to stock up on those. And then a second sale was one where they were actually doing 50 cent back issues. And so same thing, I went in and took advantage of those sales. And these sales are great for filling in holes in runs from either current series limited series or recently concluded things that maybe I'm not keeping up with brand new every month. And so that's where the first set of books comes from. Here we have a copy of Spider-Man number one. This has uh, Dan Slott doing the writing and Mark Bagley doing the pencils. I'm not a huge Spider-Man collector, but occasionally I'll pick up his issues in the form of back issues. This is one where I got a variant to issue one, but I couldn't turn this down for 50 cents or a dollar with a great Mark Bagley cover like that. So I grabbed this uh, duplicate copy here of Spider-Man number one, just a different cover. Similarly, this is not the current run of Daredevil, but the, oh, actually, it's the last, the previous run of Daredevil. With all these reboots, it gets really confusing and uh, hard to keep up with which volume you're on. But this was a variant of the previous number one, I believe. I just liked it for the John Romita Jr. cover. I do have a copy, probably of the you know standard issue or something like that. And then here we've got uh, from her last title, her last volume, She-Hulk number six. This volume ran for 15 issues. 
and I kind of got some of them new, but not all of them. And so I'm going back and filling in the holes where I need to. And after this acquisition, I think I only need uh, issue number four to complete that 15 issue run. And I am keeping up with Sensational She-Hulk, her current title, keeping that you know new every month. But what that was a hole filler from her last volume. And the next several, actually, no, we're not quite into those yet. Let me shuffle some things around here. Um, We'll shuffle that too. Got a few Avengers books. These are from the Jason Aaron run on Avengers. He wrote the entire last volume of Avengers, as well as a couple tie-in series. And I was collecting that new for a long time, but then dropped off and then picked it up again and kind of back and forth on that one. But now I'm at the point where if I can go back and fill in those missing issues for 50 cents or a dollar a piece, I'm definitely going to do it so I can finish reading his entire run. This is one where I'm guessing maybe we'll get a solicitation at some point for a, uh, you know, a volume one of an omnibus edition. I don't know. But for now, the cheapest bet for me is to continue to hunt for these issues in, you know, 50 cent and dollar bins because I've only got a, a handful of more issues to complete his time on this title. But this is Avengers number 60. This volume ran for 66 issues. Here's 63, which is a variant cover, but a cool variant nonetheless. And then a copy of issue 65. Sticking with Avengers, this is one of those kind of related titles that Jason Aaron wrote. This is Avengers Forever. And I think this had to do with a storyline where it was this multiversal Avengers story that was going on and it ping-ponged back and forth between Avengers and this spin-off title, Avengers Forever. And I think issue 15 is the final issue to that tie-in series. And then similar, another Avengers-related title done by Jason Aaron. This is Avengers Assemble Omega. I'm not completely sure, but I think there was that same storyline started with an alpha issue, ping-ponged back and forth between Avengers and Avengers Forever, and then concludes here with this Avengers Assemble Omega issue. But glad to have found that for like I said, 50 cents or a dollar, because that had a $7.99 cover price on it. So great when you can get a deal on those. This next one is actually um, from a limited series. It is Avengers, but not connected to Jason Aaron's run. This was issue number five from All Out Avengers. And I just thought it was a cool cover featuring Captain Marvel, but done by Jan. Is it Basil Dua? Basil Dua? Um, however you say that name. But Great art style there, and thought that was a cool cover. And a question for all of you, how do you feel about the Virgin covers? Um, on the one hand, I can appreciate the appeal because you get more art and less of the, you know, the trade dress there. But at the same time, once you put this in a bag and board, unless you know what it is, you have to take it out in order to see the title. And for me, at least, some of the artistic appeal of the cover is the title as well. So I kind of like seeing that on there. So generally I don't gravitate towards the Virgin covers as my first choice, but for a, a great price, like 50 cents or a buck, I'm definitely gonna get that um, nevertheless. So uh, you can flip that around and you can see all out Avengers number five there on the back. I guess unless you use clear backing boards that some companies make, and then you, you avoid that problem, but I don't generally use the clear backing boards. Here is, well, let's skip this one. Sorry, I thought I'd organize these a little bit better. I don't want to group these a little bit by theme. I've got several X-Men related books, uh, like it's been for the X-Men kind of properties since the 90s at least. There is never a shortage of X-Men titles, whether that's ongoing issues or limited series or one shots. And so I tend to get caught up in the hype, at least initially, and I'll start to get a lot of things. But then I realize, wait, this is what they always do. They come out with like 10, 12 different titles at a time. And I can't possibly keep up with that every month because there's other things I want to read. And so I dial it back try to focus in on a few core things and then try to fill in the other titles and runs as I can find them cheap. And so what you'll see here is the result of that type of effort where I started maybe collecting some of these but then dropped off and now I'm piecing together the rest uh, as I can find them cheap. 
here. The first one that I've got is Knights of X number five. This is kind of a reboot of Excalibur, the last volume of Excalibur, but it just ran for five issues and same creative team, I believe, or at least in part. But this was the final issue and I needed that one to complete that short run. Then I got a couple more issues from one of the main ongoing X-Men titles. This is Immortal X-Men. Uh, this is issue number six. Mark Brooks doing some great covers on all of these. And then also here's a great Storm cover on a copy of issue 11. So a little bit of progress there. Next up, got another Virgin variant. Same artist again. And this one is to Immortal X-Men number 13. Got this for two reasons. One, because it's a cool cover, but then also because it's part of that Immortal X-Men run that I am working on. So I grabbed that. Then I went and got, this is Nightcrawler's number three. This was part of the Sins of Sinister kind of X-Men event story that went through. They renamed a few titles as become a real trend in the X-Men books where you retitle certain titles for a, a short period of time while you're telling an event story and then you go back. Um, but this was one of those tie-ins. And I've done a combination of getting some of these new, but then reading them on Marvel Unlimited as well. But the completionist in me just said, you got to complete the story in print as well. So there's Nightcrawlers number three. And then um, this is a limited series that I started new. And now um, I've worked on completing it via back issues. Here's issue three of Rogue and Gambit. And... I'm blanking on this artist's name. I want to say Elena Casagrande. Is that her name? I think that's her name. If I'm wrong, I'll put it in a little text blurb down below. But I got lucky with that one. That's a really cool variant cover, and that just happens to be the cover that they had uh, uh, during their sale. So grab that copy of issue number three. But then they also had issue four. This did run for five issues, and I have since completed it. Spoiler alert. Uh, but that's in an, another haul that you'll see in the coming weeks here. But for now, I had issues three and four. And then we're kind of going through this time right now with the X-Men where the age of Krakoa is coming to an end. And so you've got the fall of X going on. And then there's going to be the, was it the fall of the House of X and then the rise of the Powers of Ten. That'll be the kind of the other bookend to the Krakoan era. And... Just before that, they did a series of at least one shots that were doing, that were carrying this title before the fall, you can see there. And I didn't get any of those new, and I'm just kind of picking them up on the cheap when I can find them. This was a great find, another Virgin cover. Strange how many Virgin covers I found uh, during this sale, but love that, that Miss Marvel era of Carol Danvers on the cover. And that's CF Villa or Via doing the art. That's pretty cool looking. And then this one shot is the Heralds of Apocalypse. So go ahead and pick that up. They also had another one shot from the Befall, Before the Fall line of books. This is Mutant First Strike. And I'm guessing these all tell stories that take place after the fallout from the last Hellfire Gala, where things really went to hell in a handbasket really fast for the mutants. And uh, yeah, Orcus is doing a lot of bad things. So we'll, we'll see. There's a lot of chaos going on right now. So once the dust settles a little bit, then I'll be able to slow down and actually piece together the story, get online, look up some reading orders and read the whole story. But for now, I'm just piecing together issues here. Got a few more from... Actually, I may have concluded this short run, Legion of X, that only ran for 10 issues. The story was okay, but again, the completionist in me wants to get the rest of it just to finish it out. And I got issue, what is it, eight? And then the final issue from that short run, issue number 10. And this is one of the Nightcrawler-focused books. And then a little bit more X-Men to go here. A couple issues from x Force ongoing. This was one, again, similar story, was reading it new, then I stopped. But with the recent storyline following Beast, because for those of you who don't know, and if you don't care about spoilers, he's gone full bad guy, basically. And 
they're going to work on fixing that and in the issues leading up to issue 50 and in the you know since that's coming i want to read that story but i'm still trying to piece together some of these holes or fill in some of these holes from this because x-force historically has been a team and a concept that i've liked and so I figure, you know what, eventually I'm going to want these anyway, so why don't I go ahead and get them when I can for 50 cents or a buck a piece just to catch up on that. And then I also grabbed issue 25 from that ongoing. All right, that does it for X-Men. We're still in Dreamer's Vault here, though. This one was an accidental buy, I admit. This is Iron Man. I did not collect this volume of Iron Man. This is the last volume of Iron Man that ran for maybe 18 issues or so. I'm not, I'm really not sure. I didn't track with it. I have been reading it uh, or collecting it, I should say so far in the newest ongoing. And for whatever reason, I wasn't even thinking about what issue number the current volume is on. Um, and so I thought, oh great, Iron Man 16. I don't have that one yet, but it's totally the last volume. I think they might just be getting to issue 16 in the next few months here. So that was totally my mistake, but I'll hold on to this for now because you never know. Iron Man one is one of those characters and titles for me that I don't really aggressively go after it, but when I start to read it, I kind of like a lot of the volume. So um, this may be something I eventually want to collect, so I'll hold on to this for now and it'll get me started on that volume. And then now we've got some, uh, some more indie publishers to show you of things I picked up, still at Dreamer's Vault. This was a nostalgia buy. Here is the facsimile to Gargoyles, number one. I didn't have any of these original comics when they came out, but I was a big fan of the cartoon. And I have gotten some of the reboot issues since it's come back. Um, not all of them, but some of them. But I saw this facsimile, so I figured why not, what the heck. And it, it's a great cover by Joe Matarera. So had to have that one, that's great. This was just a, a humorous buy. This is Invincible Red Sonia number 10. Don't ask me what volume, I have no idea. I have not been keeping current with Red Sonia uh, after uh, you know her Marvel days, but I will say that she's got a new, I think it's an ongoing, is it the Savage, uh, Savage Red Sonia? That's on issue like three now. And I've read the first issue of that and kind of enjoyed it. So I may stick with that one for a little while, but I got this one for the uh, Frank Joe cover, black and white, but just kind of a little poke at fun there, a little humorous cover. Thought that'd be a fun pickup for cheap. And then I got this one issue from Noctera. This is a volume or a series that I haven't read any of the issues yet, but I've got the first 10 or 11 now and a couple of these one-shot specials. So I've got enough that I can I can start to read it, but the concept seems really cool. The art looks really cool. So um, I'm cautiously optimistic that I'll like the story as well, but found this one additional issue that I didn't have. So I'll grab that. And then here's a title that's now concluded, Oblivion Song. This ran for 36 issues, collected it new for a long time, and then same old story, dropped off. But now I'm trying to go back and finish it out. I could get the collected edition, but at this point it'd be cheaper for me just to keep looking in the dollar bins for the handful of issues that I need to finish out this volume. And then I can finish reading it, but uh, found at the sale issue 19, 35, and then thankfully 36. So the final issue in the run. And like I said, I think I only have, it's between three and five issues I think now to, to fill this out and to complete it. I don't see Oblivion Song in the dollar bins too often. I don't see them in the back issue bins too often. So I definitely feel lucky whenever I can find these uh, missing issues to build out that collection. And then the last book to show you from Dreamer's Vault is a title that I didn't know anything about or hadn't paid attention to, but I like the creative team. And I had heard or seen and heard another YouTube channel talking about this book. Um, the YouTube channel is called Pete's World. Uh, he's out of the UK and he had gotten, I think it was just this single issue. It's called Little Monsters, 
issue number one. He talked a little bit about it, sounded intriguing to me. And then when I saw it during their sale, I figured, what the heck, I'm going to grab it because I really like this team up of Jeff Lemire and Dustin Gwynn. They did Descender and then Ascender at Image. And this story here is actually about this group of kids. And if you can't tell by the cover, they're actually vampires. But I, from the first issue, I'm not sure if they really understand either that they're vampires or maybe that they're different than other kids because it takes place in this futuristic post-apocalyptic type society, at least is what it seems like, but looks intriguing. So I may keep an eye out for other issues of this as I come across them. But again, 50 cents or a dollar, it's pretty low risk for a story that had a good recommendation to begin with. And I enjoyed it. So I'll keep looking for those. But that was a good little haul from Dreamer's Vault. Never disappointed during their sales and I can always make some great progress either on current volumes that I haven't kept up with real regularly or recently concluded things that I'm trying to go back and maybe I've had my interest peaked in them and now I want to go back and, and piece those together. So always a great source for me there. The next uh, four books here are all Batman related and I'm going to show you these. Um, where did these come from? These actually came from they're kind of holdover books from, it may have been the last video I did or one of my mo more recent videos where I showed you a bunch of books from a bulk buy that I placed from a, or a bulk buy that I made from a local vendor. And these four books I did not show you. Um, they were just in a different pile, but they're still pretty cool. And I thought you might appreciate seeing them. First is just this copy of Batman 335. So a nice early, well, not, not even early Bronze Age. You'd think that's earlier than what it is. This is 1981. So it's towards actually the later part of the Bronze Age, but looks really cool. And this is the second oldest Batman comic book I own now. And even though I'm not really collecting Batman of this era actively to try to build it out, when I come across them for real cheap like that, definitely going to hold on to that just because it's a cool thing to have in my collection. The next two um, are from a little limited series. I don't really remember if these are reprints or if it's a new story that's kind of telling tales from earlier times in Batman's lore. I, I, I really don't remember. I did have a copy of issue one, but it was a little bit different than this. This is a standard size comic book. The f copy of issue number one that I uh, originally had was smaller and I think it was originally packaged with a cassette tape um, and now I have issues two and three I'll show you this and this to complete that I don't have number one in a standard size so maybe I'll keep my eyes peeled for that but I really like this cover here I thought that was great but just some cool Batman stuff and interestingly if I had to guess, I would have thought these were, you know, mid eighties or something like that, but they're not. These two issues from this little limited series are actually older than this issue of Batman. So go figure, you, you never know. So got those two. And then the last one is just kind of a cool reprint book. I think it's just this one issue it's called Dynamic Classics feature starring Batman. This reprints two stories from two different issues of Detective Comics. I don't remember the issues off the top of my head, but there's kind of a, a write-up in the back of this that I read, and it sounded like they were setting this up to kick off a multiple reprint series that DC was going to do to intentionally go back and pull out old stories that they wanted to reprint. You know, it's fascinating to look back at this time because... If you didn't get this reprint and you never read those original issues, you wouldn't have them. Um, and it's interesting too, because the prices and how different they are at this time compared to today, because at the back, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna pull it out and I'll, I'll tell you real quick here what he says, but he compares it to having to buy these things at a comic book store. But basically he was like, oh, we're, we're giving you a pretty good deal on these. Uh, because if you really wanted to go get the first editions, um, it cost you almost three dollars to get the first editions of these. But yeah, it's just just a cool little write up in the back, and it just 
it, it captures the the time and what comics were like at the at the time compared to today and uh they've changed a lot and they've gotten a lot more expensive for for a lot of back issues uh but you can also get a lot more of these things through facsimiles through collected editions trade paperbacks and digital formats but yeah just a, a cool thing to have in my collection as a reprint but like i i think i said at, this, at the beginning i don't know that it ever went beyond issue one even though they were setting it up to go more than one because when i go into where did i look it up was it clz um but when i tried to add this to my collection it only showed the one issue so if you know that this went longer then let us know down in the comments comments so we can uh, benefit from your knowledge of that but those books thought would be cool to show you. Now, the last section of books um, really kind of dates me in terms of how far behind I am in showing you hauls because these books come from FallCon 23. So this was a show at the end of October and I'm just getting around to showing you these books. So I've got some catching up to do, but the books themselves are timeless. So hopefully it won't matter that I got them a couple months ago that I'm showing you now. Falcon is a, it's just got a great history here in the Twin Cities. It was the first show that I went to when I was, you know, living here in Minnesota and it went away for a little bit and now it's back again. So really happy just to have that name and this, uh, this group of, uh, of shows together. They do a fall con and then they have a spring con as well. So great time. And I got some fun books at the last fall con. These Again, we're mostly dollar books. One may have been a 50 center, one may have been $2, but you know, all in the same ballpark there. And some fun, less common finds for me. So that, that's always exciting because some of the books you come across in the dollar bins, you see them all the time. And it may be that you don't buy them one day, but then a few weeks or months later, you decide, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and buy those now. But you never feel pressured any one moment to buy them because they're always in the dollar bins. Other times you come across books where you say, ooh, I never see that in the dollar bins. I'm totally buying that today. This first book is an example of that. This is The Batman Strikes, issue number 26. Now, I don't ever really see people talking about this title. This is a comic that was based on a cartoon called The Batman that I think aired on Fox Kids back in like 2005 timeframe. Jeff Matsuda did the character designs, and I totally get that some people love some of the designs and hated some of the others, so I'm, I'm not going to get into all those kind of debates, but overall, I really enjoyed this show, and honestly, one of my favorite things about it, besides the character designs, was the theme song. If you haven't heard it, I encourage you, Google the Batman theme song, which is a little generic, so you'll get like the old TV show and things like that, but... The Edge from U2 is the one who wrote that, and it's just got a really cool, edgy kind of feel to it. So that was one of my favorite things. But they did a comic that I only recently, and by recent I mean you know, the last handful of years, um, came to know about. It ran for 50 issues, and since I've learned about it, I've found the first three issues, and now this issue 26. So I've got a long way to go before I complete this run, but it is one that I will continue to hunt for just because it's so cool. This is also one that if they ever solicit an omnibus for this, I will get that as well. I just think the, the animation style was great. Uh, it's an earlier part of Batman's career, so I think he's only been Batman for a couple of years at the start of the show, at least. And if... Yeah, if you have HBO Max, all of those episodes are streaming on there, so you can watch those there as well. But very happy, needless to say, that I found one copy of Random Issue 26 to add to my collection. Then I got uh, three issues from Captain America Volume 3. These three issues allowed me to complete the run that I was working on. I was working on what was started out as the Wade Garney run, and then it became like Wade Kubert, and then switched to Dan Jurgis writing, but then Andy Kubert was still drawing. And so I was working on all of that, which took me up to like issue early 30s somewhere. And these three issues, starting with, what number is this? Sorry, there's a glare, I can't even see it. 25? Yeah, 
25, and then 26, and 27 now allowed me to complete that run for myself. So yeehaw, happy times, <laughs> I get to finish that run. It's always, always feels good to complete a run that you're working on. And as of this point, I have no intentions of going higher up in that volume where I think it just continued with Dan Jurgens. He may have started drawing it too. I don't even know, but happy with what I have so far. And then these next two issues might seem really random for me, but it's an example of the thrill of the hunt. This is Starfire number three. This was a short run series. I think it ran eight issues from DC. Um, kind of gives you a Red Sonja kind of vibes, this woman with a sword and kind of kind of an odd costume there. But I think, you know, it's an alien world and she's a rebel fighter or something. But um, I really don't know much about her, but I saw a couple issues that I picked up in a dollar bin, you know, within the last few years. And then I figured I never see these. And if I do for a dollar, I'll go ahead and pick them up. And so at the Falcon, they had issue three, and then issue six as well. And six issues in, she's already got a new costume. Look at that. But short run, but just a fun thing to hunt for. If you've ever read Starfire or know anything about this character, because I know there's a different Starfire that will be much more familiar to DC fans. Uh, this is not that Starfire, but you know anything about her uh, or anything about that story, go ahead and let us know down in the comments. But just a, a cool thing for me to be hunting for. Another run that I was able to complete at this year's Falcon, Punisher Warzone. This is issue seven. I showed you in a recent video where I picked up, I think, six of the eight issues that were penciled by John Romita Jr. I've had a copy of issue one for a very long time, but never went any further than that. And then I think I was able to get them for 25 cents or 50 cents a piece. Recently got six of the other issues in the John Romita Jr. run and was only missing issue seven. So for a dollar at Falcon, I got issue seven and now I have the full eight, eight issue run from John Romita Jr.'s time on this on this uh, title. because And I got this just for the pencils because I'm not generally a Punisher fan, but he has some cool covers and some cool interior art. So I'll definitely give those a read. Then we got these last four books, I think these came from Go Big or Go Home Comics, uh, and Bradley is the owner there. And fun fact, he just recently got space in like an antique shop or a vintage shop out in Stillwater, Minnesota. So for any locals out there, and if you're close or drivable to Stillwater, uh, Go Big or Go Home Comics has some boxes of comics there. I haven't made it out to that space yet, but That'll be a road trip for, for someday here so I can go uh, check out his um, his supply there out in Stillwater. But at Falcon, where he also was, I picked this up. Uh, I think this was 50 cents. Aerosmith, uh, a six issue series done by Kurt Busick and Carlos Pacheco. It's kind of a reimagining of the events of World War I, but in an alternate reality. And it's got magic and dragons and cool things like that. Uh, that was enough for me to be interested. And this is issue number two. With this, I have all but, I think, issues three and four right in the middle there. And then there was a follow-up six-part series called Aerosmith Behind Enemy Lines. I've completed that, but still working on this main series. And then once I get those other two issues, then I can read the whole thing. Then we got here some dollar books, I think. This is just a Transformers variant cover. This is a Guido Guidi cover done from the um, Transformers Bumblebee limited series during the IDW era. Just thought that was a cool cover. And interestingly, I just recently reread this because I also have the IDW oversized hardcover collected editions from uh, this time of Transformers comics. And I have no problem when it comes to Transformers uh, and double dipping because I like the single issues, I wanna get them new. I like the variant covers, but then I like the hardcover collected editions as well. That's my first love when it comes to comics, so I'll always double, triple dip when it comes to those things. But that was a cool variant cover. 
Another Transformers related variant that I was very excited to find is Transformers Prime Beast Hunters issue number three. This is like the subscription variant or the C variant. Transformers Prime, um, the TV show, a computer animated show back in like 2010, 2011, done on, gosh, was that the called the hub at the time, Discovery Hub? Um, I would say, and I, I this may get me in trouble with Transformers fans, I don't know, but outside of the Gen 1 original cartoon that got me hooked to begin with, this is right up there as one of my favorite series that they ever did for Transformers. I just thought the stories were great, the characters were great. They had uh, Peter Cullen and Frank Welker doing Optimus and Megatron voices. I just, I love just about everything about that show. So um, I have some of the DVDs for those and I enjoy watching the show, but they did a comic book and that variant is one of the character designs. This is like a Decepticon, is that a, actually that's Soundwave. I, I thought it was one of the Decepticon drones at first. That's uh, the Soundwave, you know, that's his version in the Transformers Prime. But I wanted to get all of these character variants that came from this short series and they're not easy to find. Um, so really happy that I could find this one. And then finally, one more book to show you. It is last, but definitely not least. This is Marvel. This is Silver Surfer number 125 from volume three. This is a volume I've mentioned many times before. I am working on completing it. And because I did collect it actively for a lot of the issues when they were coming out, but never finished it. And so I'm trying to complete this volume. The higher number issues do get much harder to find and get harder to find for cheap as well. But with this acquisition of issue number 125, I am now down to just two issues uh, away from completing this volume. I think the numbers I need, I know 146, the final issue is one that I need. And although I don't want to have to pay up for that, I'm probably willing to. If it comes down to the point where that's the only book I need, if I can find it for a decent price and in good shape, I'll probably pay up a little bit for that just to complete this volume. And then the other issue I still need, I wanna say it's like 138 or something like that. It's a pretty iconic cover as well. It has Silver Surfer and then there's two other characters. Is it like Spider-Man and Daredevil or something? But I think it's a Ron Garney cover, but that's a pretty um, well-known cover as well. That's the other issue I need and so, and maybe I'll have to spend at least a couple bucks on that one, but the hunt will continue. But for now, really happy to have found this issue and be down to just two more issues to go to complete uh, that entire volume of Silver Surfer. And that's the last book I have to show you today. So with that, I'm gonna say that's gonna do it for me. And that's gonna do it for our first dollar haul of 2024. I do hope you saw something that you liked, but what about you? What kind of things have you been finding on your own comic adventures? Were there any sales in your area, either going back to like Black Friday or over the, the Christmas or New Year's holiday? Anything you've been picking up recently that you're excited about? Let us know down below. Now, if you're not quite ready for the YouTube fun to stop, I have hand selected a couple videos here for you to check out. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.